Hi, everybody. Stu. AG6AG. Well, I've had every intention of getting an antenna up in the air for the last month and a half, maybe even two months. But time schedules, wind, rain, I haven't been able to get up on a ladder to do it. Um, that said, during that period of time, I haven't come out with a video either, so I wanted to pop one out real quick on a do-it-yourself project having to do with uh, replacing the regular old mic on your radio with a boom mic and uh, maybe a little bit nicer environment to do your stuff in while you're in the shack. So without any further ado, oh, you know what? Hey, while I'm thinking of it, please click on the subscribe button. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up, will you? If you click on the little bell icon, you'll get notifications when I come out with new videos. So, uh, oh, and questions, of course, put them down in the comments. With that, let's go ahead and get started on do-it-yourself microphone systems. Well, okay, so let's talk about external microphones for a minute. Now, you can go out and purchase uh, the one made by your radio manufacturer. It might be on a nice podium with a push-to-talk key. Um, those are usually excessively expensive, and you can probably do better with a company like uh, Heil or something like that. And I want to give you a couple examples of these external microphones just to show you. Um, so... What we have here is an example of two of the Heil microphones. Uh, this one right here is a really, really nice microphone. I really like it. Um, however, it's got a push-to-talk built right into it and a switch here to change from wide to narrow mode depending on what band you're using. But in order to get that push-to-talk, it has four pins on the inside here. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that you're going to have to have custom cables and custom all sorts of stuff. Heil makes actually some really, really nice cables, right? Uh, this is a four pin, so this supports a push to talk in the microphone. And what we have here is the other end that is going to uh, plug into your radio. This one is for a uh, uh, standard uh, uh, RJ45 connector. And of course, we've got the connector here which plugs into a standard quarter inch plug for an external push to talk. So you've got the best of both worlds with this particular Heil. What's the downside? Well, you know, there is one big one, and that is that finding extension cords and things like that for a four pin uh, uh, cable like that is really difficult. Industry standard is three pin. This is an example of a three-pin microphone. This three-pin microphone actually will allow you to use standard stuff, but it has no push-to-talk anywhere on the microphone. So that's a decision you're going to have to make. Um, the reason that I would be concerned about having a four pin is let's say that you wanted to make a switch box uh, to be able to tie multiple radios into the same microphone system. That becomes more difficult because it really is difficult to find those four pin cables. That being said, uh, having to push the talk on the mic is kind of nice. What are some of our other solutions, though, that we can play with? And you might find this interesting. So I was looking at the push to talk buttons that you could hold with your hand and I came across this uh, this little push to talk button. Well, it really isn't a push to talk button, is it? That is a remote starter switch. Runs about 15 bucks made out of plastic. Not a really complicated item in itself, but uh, you know, they work really, really well. And I decided that I'd give that a try to see what I could do with it. So let's take a look at my little project here. Here it is. Now, all I did was I cut off the alligator clips and I just put on a little quarter inch right there. Works really well. This is an absolutely awesome alternative. And with testing, it holds together. 
And the big important part here is this was about 15 bucks, Amazon Prime. Okay, so this is something that you can get reasonably cheap. Now, there's all sorts of other bits and pieces you're going to have to throw at this, okay? I mean, to give you an idea, this is a, right here. That's a plus $100 mic, right? Uh, the other one that I showed, that one was uh, in the area of about $60, okay? And I've used them both. I actually uh, used the $60 one in my home rig because guess what? I set up a mic switch. But that, you know what? That is a another subject for another video. Well now, okay, so let's say that a hand switch, a hand push to talk isn't what you're after. Let's say that you want both these hands free to use a computer or write in a log or whatever while you're talking. A lot of advantage to that. Well, you know, you're going to end up, of course, with a mic that's going to be on a boom somewhere, right? But you're going to need a foot switch. Now, I played with a bunch of the foot switches that were out there, and a couple things I found. Uh, the first problem with me is I've got a really heavy foot. You know, just ask my driving record. Um, all kidding aside, though, I do have a heavy foot. So when I sit with my foot relaxed on top of a push-to-talk switch, guess what? It's push-to-talk. It's on. Um, what I find myself doing is moving my foot off the foot uh, push-to-talk switch and then picking it up and putting it down on the push-to-talk switch when I want to talk. Which is fine, although, you know, uh, in a lot of times you'll be kind of uh, in a rapid-fire thing, and what'll happen is I'll lift my foot up, and I will hold it up. And my ankle, my ankle, after about three or four hours of that contesting, really would hurt. I mean, I remember getting up and limping and going, what's wrong with me? And... Of course, I realized it was old age, but besides that, it was because I was actually holding my foot up. So I started to look for another solution. And I found some industrial uh, foot switches that were kind of neat. Let me show you. All right, so look at this baby right here. So what I've got in this is a enormous, an enormous push-to-talk switch. I mean, this thing's big. It spans about 9, 10 inches, okay? Now, interestingly enough, if you take a look at it from a side angle, like this, you can see the construction. Uh, this is a really, really rugged item. And I'll pick it up, take a look at the spring that's in there. I found that I could set my foot down on this and then just totally relax. Uh, let me use this old bottle to prop it up so it's a little bit more in camera angle. So let me grab a screwdriver here and I'll show you what I did. This thing comes without wires or anything. And uh, come on. There we go. And basically, all I did was I took a standard uh, guitar cable and I cut it off at about 10 feet just ran it in and I put some ends on it and guess what it works great and the really cool part about this is the whole inside of this thing's adjustable I mean if you look here I've got two screws here that uh, sets the throw for the paddle and I'm not sure if I can get in here to really show you but you see I'm moving it right now that's a really really well made micro switch right there and the cool part about this is this has three positions on it. So uh, if I, for whatever reason, wanted to change something, I could. One of the cooler parts is we've got a common and then we got a normally open and a normally closed. And I've got it set up for normally open. But I could toggle back and forth with a three wire if I wanted, if I wanted to energize something else. So a lot of advantages to this. Now, all that said, let me uh, pop this back on and get a couple screws in it. All that said, you know what? This thing was great when I was testing it, but the only problem was that uh, the angle of my foot, and I'm going to turn it on its side here, okay, the angle of my foot 
compared to the floor over here was really uh, up a little bit. Uh, yeah, it held, it supported my foot, but it was a little uncomfortable getting in and out of it because of the angle. I was like, you know, always angled up. So I thought about it and I said, you know, uh, I can make this better. <laughs> well, I guess it depends what you consider better, right? Um, I decided I would mount it and give myself a little heel support. So I'm just going to show this to you. This is the completed project. It's so big, I can't get it all angled in here. I'm going to try to wide out this a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So this is the entire thing right here. Uh, you know what? Let me see if I can get some more height out of this. Just to get it back a little. Um, yeah, it's just really tight here. Uh, and I'll just get rid of me. What the heck? You don't need to see me. Anyway. Long story short, this is uh, this is the unit right here, mounted, all set to go, and it basically is just a piece of wood, right, that I've mounted it to. It's huge, and it's heavy, and it doesn't move, and it doesn't slide out of the way. I love it. Um, probably not something I'd take out to remote, uh, to operate remotely, but you know what? It's really cool. It is a fun pedal to use and it works and it doesn't hurt my foot anyway that's all i got for you today i wanted to show you this stuff because these are inexpensive and quick and easy projects for you to do right we're amateur radio operators we love to tinker this is the stuff we do i mean seriously do we do we go out and buy this stuff oh absolutely of course we could do we want to do that? Well, not if we can, like, make it. And it isn't always about the price either, guys, you know? Uh, let me see if I can show you one more thing. So, let's say you wanted to use both these together. Now, how would you do that? Well, check this out. So, you just put a splitter on your input. So, you can plug that directly in to your push to talk system, you can use either one. And there's nothing that's gonna mix it up because all these are on off switches. One last thing I'm gonna cover here is make sure you don't try to use a variable switch here, like something that you would use to control a sewing machine um, because you don't wanna in, introduce different resistances into your push to talk system on your radio. Very important. If you watch this all the way to the end, that's a bonus, okay? Anyway, that's all I got on this subject. Got some more stuff coming out real soon though, so uh, stand by for that. Well, there you go. Not a huge project, not a difficult project, um, but it is a fun thing to do. And if you're an amateur radio operator, I'm sure you like to tinker just like I do. This is a really good starting project, both these things. Uh, getting an external microphone set up together can be a little grueling, you need to pick out a mic, you need to come up with a, a boom or some sort of amount to hold it. Of course, we talked about the push-to-talk systems, so um, there's a little bit to it, but there's a lot of great assets out there, and there's probably a lot of great assets in the other amateur radio operators that you know in your area. Um, and of course, YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, hey, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, let's see. And any questions or comments you have about the video or anything, please make them down in the comments. Uh, I try to answer these questions within a couple of days, okay? With that, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. And I really hope to hear you on the air.